Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. A reminder on this uh, Wednesday that our title sponsor is Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. <laughs> we, we talked a lot about the uh, Canucks, but what about the Kraken? The oh, Kraken to Seattle. And for those of you who don't speak French, that's Honestly. the Seattle Kraken. 5-1 over the Predators. They've won uh, five straight as we bring in, and not to mention what the Seahawks are up to. Oh, four. As uh, we bring in from KJR Sports Radio in Seattle, our friend Ian Furnish. So how are you, sir? Couldn't be better, Donnie. Couldn't be better. <laughs> so uh, we were talking about uh, the you know the Canucks winning last night, being one point yeah. out of the playoff spot. So we're we're thinking up up Robson <laughs> Street, take a left on Joy, or whatever the case may be for the parade. Is the yes. parade being uh, planned for the Seattle Kraken yet? Winners of five straight. No, because we were despondent down here uh, about the plate of the Canucks, Rutherford v. Boudreaux. And so, mm. you know, we can't even enjoy our own success right now. We're so worried about what, what's going on up north up uh, with you guys right now. But, uh, hey, when you can beat Ottawa, that's a big win. Uh, not not everybody goes into Ottawa, the nation's capital, and gets a victory. So kudos yeah. to the Canucks. And, uh, yeah, the, all, all the Kraken are doing is just plugging along, beating, you know, teams night yeah. in and night out, five straight now, nothing nothing big here. Yeah, but wins over teams that are very good, i.e. the Colorado Avalanche. Yeah. Uh, w- what is going on? What's going right with the Kraken? Well, I think we talked about it last year a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, they they play hard. Like they do play hard, I, you know. They've got you know guys like Yanni Gord, um, you know, and, and, and Larson and other. They play hard. Like they they don't they don't take nights off. Um, I think last year they used, they just didn't have any skill. Last year, guys, they couldn't score. I mean, they just really they flat out couldn't score. And I I think you have to do that a little bit uh, in this league. And you know they're scoring this year. They're a top ten team offensively. They're a top ten team in the power play. Uh, their winning percentage. I know you guys are excited about your points, but I, we all are smart enough to know that it's about the winning percentage and the points per game. And and the and the Kraken are their top ten in that as well. Here's the wild thing: they're still in the bottom third in terms of goals against and and penalty kill, which is odd because it's a coach that kind of preaches defense. So, uh, but they're scoring. Now Berikovsky's help. Bjorkstrand hasn't put a lot of pucks in the net, but he's created a lot of things. Wenberg's playing better. Um, you know the power plays a lot better. Getting Jaden Schwartz back from an injury last year. Uh, Tanev is a good third line guy when you know, or even fourth line right now. So, you know, they're just a deeper, better hockey team. And it helps last night. I mean, they, their first goal, I don't know if you saw their first goal last night. I mean, it, uh, Everly took a shot from just inside the blue line on the right side, top of the right circle, and it mm-hmm. beat Soros on the short side. I mean, just a bad goal in the first shot of the game, and it just kind of, you know, mm-hmm. blew up from there. Uh, football. Are, are you Germany yeah. bound? Are you go- going to Germany? No, no, no thank goodness. No, no. It, it, uh, you know, it's. It, it would have been a, it would have been a fun experience. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But uh, I, you know, I, I you guys have done this business for a long time. The travel after a while kills you, and, and for the payoff wasn't big. I mean, for the TV station, it's on NFL Network, and at 6:30 in the morning Pacific time, we wouldn't be able to do a post game show until five, uh, maybe six o'clock at night. And so this, the payoff wasn't there for us. So we're we're not going. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll watch a game at home for the first time in a while. That'll be kind of fun. Hmm. Uh, at 6.30 in the morning, albeit, but uh, it should be a great atmosphere. Uh, you know, I here's an interesting thing, guys. This is I hate, you know, and, and this is where, you know, I know Donnie, you're going to call me the, the, you know, grumpy old man. It's get okay. Get off my I'm lawn. One, I'm one too. Off, and get off my lawn and everything yeah. like that. Okay, that'll be Ryan's job. I'm sure yeah. he's coming. I can't yeah. wait. You know, I'm sure he's giggling in the background <laughs> there. But I I just don't like the European games or the foreign games for the NFL. I, I, think, it's, I think it's ridiculous what they're putting these guys through. But I'm in the minority because they had 800,000 people in the queue to buy tickets before they like the hour before they went on sale in Germany when they announced really? this game. 800,000. Wow. Um, the secondary market is through the roof. And I talked to Shelby Harris, uh, Seahawk line, uh, defensive lineman the other day. And at the very end of the interview in our postgame show down there in, uh, uh, in Arizona, See, I'm getting old. I can't remember where I was three days ago, for goodness <laughs> sakes. It's a good thing I'm not going to Germany. I get lost. But, they, but uh, you know, and Shelby said, I wish we were going there for a week. You know, like I, I, he's excited about it. Now, Bruce yeah. Irvin, this will be – Bruce Irvin will have now played in five different countries. Uh, I think he said he's the first NFL player to play in five different countries and get kicked out of a Super Bowl game. So, uh, oh. I mean, it's – but these guys are excited to go over there. It's just a long travel. I mean, it's, a, it's about a 12-hour trip. They're leaving today. Oh, uh, the okay. team leaves – 
the team leaves today. Uh, they're jumping on a charter after they have a light practice today. They're going to get off the plane, which will be early afternoon on Thursday. They're going to go through a practice right away, eat dinner, go to bed, and try to acclimate at that point. So, uh, But they're heading out today. Okay, and for people who don't know, it's it's in Germany, Tampa Bay Munich, yeah. uh, versus uh, Seattle. Munich, right, Munich for, right. For people uh, who don't know. Why, Ian, and a lot of people have been asking this on social media, and we've been discussing it here, why, why send a West Coast team there? Everyone has to do their their penance, so to speak, okay. uh, I guess. Uh, and Seattle went to London. They were going to play in the new Tottenham. Uh, is it? Did I say that right? Tottenham. Yeah. The hot yes. Tottenham. Uh, Tottenham. Thanks, thanks, Rick. Good to hear from you. Uh, appreciate your contributions <laughs> on the show today. The uh, <laughs> the uh, they were going to play there, and uh, they ended up playing in uh, in Wembley like three or four years ago. So everyone has to cycle through. Uh, the good news for the fans here mm-hmm. is it's not a Seattle home game, so they don't lose a home game. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I mean, there's some places like Jacksonville, even Tampa to a certain extent, they don't sell out every game, and, and so it doesn't hurt them. Here it would hurt because we sell out every game. But, uh, yeah, everyone has to do their thing. They, in fact, when they when they played there the last time, they played the Raiders, you know, another West Coast team. So yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ian, when they traded Russell Wilson, everyone was thinking last place, uh, rebuild. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, six and three, first in your division, four straight. Um, how surprises everybody that this is happening? Well, I think if you remember, you go back, Ryan, you probably had the audio. I think I didn't I predict uh, a, a 10 and seven season for the Seahawks, maybe 11 yep. and six, right, Ryan? You got that somewhere. I'm sure that you was got three it years there. ago, Ian, but sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, was, that was another another yeah. format, different co host, yes. and a different, different, yeah. different venue, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I listen, I, I think part of it is no one thought Pete Carroll, people that have covered this team and been around, didn't feel Pete Carroll's not going to have an awful football team. You know, he, last year, it's interesting, and I think I might have brought this up with you guys last week, but if not, again, I forget mm-hmm. things. They have rebuilt this roster over two years. There are only thir- well, 15 if you include the kicker and the punter. There's 15 players mm-hmm. that are left right now on the roster from the 2020 team that went 12-4 and four and won the NFC West. Two years, and that kind of turnover. 15 players of 53 left. Only seven starters are left. They quietly rebuilt this roster over the last 24 months. And they rebuilt it in a way uh, that they were only going to miss one piece, and that was the quarterback. Well, the quarterback obviously is not having a good year in Denver, and maybe, just maybe, and I know this is a shocking development, you may want to tell your GM in Vancouver this, sometimes the coach knows what the hell's going on with the team, (laughs) you know, (laughs) and knows what to do. And in the case of Russell Wilson, they knew it was time to cut bait and get rid of him, Rick, and that's why they did that. And I don't think anybody could have foreseen uh, Geno Smith having the year he's having but that locker room is clean. It is fun. They are. It's a likable group of guys. Great leadership with Quandre Diggs and Tyler Lockett. Gino's a terrific leader. Al Woods. I mean, they've got some. They got some high character guys. And I think just getting rid of Russell changed things. I, I'll give you just a quick side note. Yep. I watched. I watched Washington State play a basketball game the other night. Uh, their first college basketball season just started down here. Yes. They lost a player by the a Noah, kid kid named Noah Williams who had played there for three years. He's a local Seattle kid, but there was always rumblings that maybe he was just kind of a problem, right? Hmm. You know, just kind of a problem. Mm-hmm. He's at University of Washington now. I watched Wazoo play the other night for the first time. I saw kids that had been there for three, four years smiling. You know, and I see that with the Seahawks. Wow. And sometimes, sometimes there's addition by subtraction, even if you think you might have to take a step back talent-wise. And I think chemistry, we talk about it in these, I think the two sports are so related. I think hockey and, and football are related. I think chemistry, playing for one another in a very tough sport where you're banging in the corners or the line of scrimmage, I think that means everything. And these guys are playing for each other. They like each other. They're competing. And they're competing for the quarterback. And he had his worst play of the year. I mean, the worst. You, we wouldn't throw that pass that was mm-hmm. a pick six. And he bounces back and goes three straight touchdown drives, seven for seven on third down. The kid's a high – Geno Smith is a high-character player, and those guys are playing for him. And it's it's really fun to watch. They're a likable team, and, and they haven't been that way for a few years. Yeah, and I've read some articles. Uh, a, 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 he's not going to win it, but an NFL MVP uh, candidate. Yeah, right. just, just so you know, uh, you go back, what, 20 years, you're a younger man. Uh, you have a chance for a free trip to Europe through work, and now you're, you're you don't want to go. You're turning it down, or whatever. The, you're officially an old man. Welcome to the club. Welcome well, to the club. 
Well, no, no, I didn't turn it down. We we had discussions about going over. I there. didn't want to go anyway. And and here's what the, and my son's had his last college football game of the season this coming Saturday. Ah, and so that was more that kind of came into play. And then the other side of it was is you know my. I'm split between radio and TV, right? I'm beholden to two masters. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, you can go over there. We can do some live shots in the morning, oh, and then oof. you can do your radio show, and oof. then you can do some live shots at night. And I said, if we start doing the math, like I, I got into this business because I'm not a math major, but I'm kind of doing the math, and that's that's way too much work, man. I, I got into this business so I didn't have to work. Yeah. Like, now you want me to work? Get out yeah. of here. No, I, I, so. I, I, I've been there. <laughs> and, and listen. I, we, the three of us, unlike the, the young guy over there wearing the, t the concert yeah. t-shirt, probably like yes. we, we, we understand, we understand there's a time to tap out, you know, there's just a time to tap out. Right. Great promotion for the country of Germany there, Ian. We appreciate that. <laughs> 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 Thanks for this, my friend next week. Ian Furness, KGR uh, sports radio in uh, Seattle.